Hey guys, this is Mr. Swoveland. I'm just making a recording of our lesson on September 2nd. So this lesson is unit one, New Zealand is on the early colonies. And we're, what you're gonna be doing for this is we're gonna go ahead and open up Kami and we're gonna read, do some critical reading on New Zealand. So the first step, of course, like always, is to go into modules, then you'll go into phase assignment, which is this one, unit one. New Zealand is on the early colonies, so right up here. Once you've opened up this assignment, you're gonna go ahead and click load unit one New Zealand is on the early colonies in a new window. And this is gonna pop up a new Kami screen for you. So this screen is gonna allow you to highlight and add comments. So just like we've done before, what we're the skill that we're really focusing on practicing today is critical reading. And what that means is that we're not only reading something, but we are also really paying attention to it. We're trying to read more slowly maybe, and we're going to highlight and add comments. So you're gonna highlight things that you know are important, and then you'll try and add comments to things that we've talked about before. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So New Zella, early British colonies in America. In the early 1600s, Europeans sailed across the Atlantic to explore the new world. Their reasons for wanting to settle in present-day America varied, but many were seeking religious freedom and economic opportunity. All right, so right there off the bat, I've got something important, right? Their reasons for wanting to settle in present-day America varied, but many were seeking religious freedom and economic opportunity. And this is something that we've talked about before. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight that. And to highlight, you know, you're going to go to markup, select the text that you want to highlight. Oh, I don't want to highlight all that. Select that text you want to highlight, and then you can click the highlight button or just select it and click markup. But this one is so important that I'm going to go ahead and add in a comment, right? And so one of the things that we talked a ton about last week were the motivations of explorers. So I'm going to say many early European colonists came to the United States seeking religious freedom or economic opportunity. And remember that this is, um, those are two of the really important things that we talked about last week. So religious freedom and economic opportunity. So like I mentioned before, one of the important things to do when you are doing critical reading is to go back and put in comments about things that you've heard before, right? Usually if you're hearing something in class multiple times, it means that it's important, that it's gonna be something that you really need to know. So let's go ahead and add that comment in there. The Spanish, who commissioned the 1492 voyage of Christopher Columbus, were the first to explore the New World. However, it was England that established the first colony. It was built in Jamestown, Virginia in 1607. All right. And I know that this is super important, right? I've kept saying 1607 is an important year over and over again already. So let's go ahead and highlight that. And I'm even going to add in a comment just so that we are no triple sure. In 1607, Jamestown, Virginia was founded. So let's go ahead and add in that comment. And I'm going to say in 1607, Jamestown became the first successful colony in North America. The American colonies were divided into three groups based on their location. The New England colonies, the Middle colonies, and the Southern colonies. Each region had its own special social, political, and economic characteristics. The New England Colonies The founders of the New England Colonies had a mission that was entirely different from that of the Jamestown settlers. Although they were in search of economic opportunity, their main goal was religious. Fed up with the Church of England, pilgrims and Puritans sought to reshape society to match what they believed God wanted. All right, so I know this is another thing really important, right? We talked a lot about yesterday how Plymouth, their focus was religious freedom. So this is going to be something that we see in the New England colonies. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight that. And I'm even going to add in a comment. I'm going to say many of the New England colonies were founded by people from England seeking religious freedom. Right, because the what the motivations that people have when they're going to these colonies is really going to shape the character of those colonies. And it's really important for us to understand what those motivations were in the different colonies. 
Fed up with the Church of England, pilgrims and Puritans sought to reshape society to match what they believed God wanted. Religious strife in England reached the peak in the 1500s. King Henry VIII broke with the Catholic Church of Rome and established his own church. Religious life in England was upended. The new church under the king's leadership was known as the Church of England, or the Anglican Church. It was approved by the English Parliament, but not everyone was willing to accept it. All right, so there we've got a couple of key important things. Like, remember, you guys probably have heard, maybe have heard, King Henry VIII wanted to get a divorce. The Catholic um, the Catholic Pope wouldn't give him a divorce, and so he broke with the Church of of the Catholic Church and created the Church of England. And this is going to be important because it means that there are people wanting to leave England because they don't agree with Henry VIII and his religious views. So these people are going to end up coming to the United States in a lot of a lot of them will end up coming to the United States seeking religious freedom. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight this these last two sentences. The new church under the king's leadership was known as the Church of England or the Anglican Church. It was approved by the English Parliament, but not everyone in England was willing to accept it. So let's go ahead and add in a comment here. And I'm going to say something like, people fleeing the Anglican Church came to America for religious freedom. All right, so pilgrims and Puritans. Pilgrims and Puritans both believed in the teachings of John Calvin. According to Calvin, neither the Catholic Church nor the Church of England were faithful to God's will. The pilgrims were called the separatists in England because of their desire to separate from the Church of England. The Puritans were so named for their desire to purify the Church. Both groups were persecuted for their beliefs. All right, that last little statement there, that's going to be important for us too. So when I say the word persecuted, what that basically means is attacked. And usually persecution means that you're being attacked for something that you believe in, or maybe because of who you are, your, like your race, ethnicity, something like that. So both cube groups were persecuted for their beliefs. So let's go ahead and add in a comment on that too. So I'm going to say religious persecution in England became an important push factor in immigration. Remember, we talked about push factors before. These are those negative factors that you have in a home country that are pushing you out of where you are and you're immigrating to someplace new. So this push factor is the persecution for their religious beliefs in England. By the early 1600s, each group had decided that England was no place for them. To both groups, the New World seemed the perfect place to realize their ambitions. The land was unspoiled. Children could be raised without being infected by wrong-headed religi English religious ideas. The chance to create a perfect society was there for the taking. By 1620, a few brave pioneers had begun to build their new society in America. The settlements they established formed the roots of colonial New England. And we talked about yesterday, right, this 1620. 1620 was the year that Plymouth was established in the U.S. So I'm going to go ahead and put a note in there. I'm going to put in 1620, Plymouth, the, I'll say the colony at Plymouth was established by people fleeing religious persecution in England. Okay. The middle colonies. Americans have often prided themselves on their rich diversity. Nor where, nowhere was that diversity more evident in pre-revolutionary America than in the middle colonies of Pennsylvania, New York, New Jersey, and Delaware. People of English, Swedish, Dutch, German, Scotch-Irish, and French origin lived side by side. Algonquin and Iroquois Native Americans also lived in the middle colonies. So too did a number of African slaves, at least during the early years. And this is going to be something that's important. This um, nowhere was diversity more evident in pre-revolutionary America than in the middle colony. So we can go ahead and add a highlight to that. Um, and that's kind of kind of shape how these areas develop, the middle colonies develop. Unlike solidly Pur Puritan New England, middle colonies were home to a wide variety of religious groups. Among them were Quakers, Mennonites, Lutherans, the Dutch Reformed, Calvinists, and Presbyterians. The new cities of New York and Philadelphia grew quickly in size. They gave rise to brilliant thinkers such as Benjamin Franklin, who earned respect on both sides of the Atlantic, 
And here too, this is another thing that we're going to find important in U.S. history, and we're going to go ahead and highlight that. The new cities of New York and Philadelphia grew quickly in size. And I'm going to even add a comment saying, oop, did not like me. I'm going to go ahead and add a comment that says political upheaval began in the new American cities. And this is going to become really important. What we are going to see is as we start to develop U.S. history, as the United States start to develop as a country, some of the most important political thinking, some of the most radical ideas start to come out of these new cities like New York, Philadelphia, and of course, Boston. Unlike New England, where the rocky soil made large-scale agriculture difficult, the middle colonies were fertile. Wheat and corn farm local farms helped feed all of the American colonies. So that is definitely important, right? The middle colonies were fertile and they became the breadbasket of the colonies or the place where we grew food. So I'm going to go ahead and add a comment to that because this is going to become an important thing. Anytime you see a broad idea about economics specific to the colonies, like what type of economics they had, what was the main economic engine, that's going to be something that you want to pay attention to. So I'm going to say the middle colonies produced enough food to feed not only themselves, but also the other American colonies. And this is important, right? Because it's going to allow the northern colonies to focus on trade. It's going to allow the southern colonies to focus on cash crops because they are able to trade with people in those middle colonies for food. All right, the southern colonies. While New England's growth centered on trade and the middle colonies fed America, the southern colonies turned to cash crops. The two most important were tobacco and cotton. All right, and here again, we've got something important that the article is telling us, right? While New England's growth centered on trade and the middle, middle colonies fed America, the southern colonies turned to cash crops. The two most important were tobacco and cotton. And there, I've got something that not only is important about the southern colonies, but is important about all three of the colonies. So let's go ahead and write in a quick note. And I'm going to focus on what were those economies of the different colonies. So I'm going to say New England's economy focused on trade. The middle colonies economy focused on producing food, and the southern colonies focused on producing cash crops like tobacco. Okay? And those are going to be really important because these basic economic ideas, these economic um, mainstays or the most important economic parts of these colonies will really shape how they develop over the next couple hundred years. Virginia was the first successful southern colony. Immediately to its north was Maryland. In both colonies, tobacco became the most important crop. To the south lay the Carolinas, and in the deep south was Georgia, the last of the original 13 colonies. The south's dependence on growing cash crops led it to use a large slave labor force. Slaves were present in the north, but were much more important in, to the south. They were central to the southern way of life. All right, and we definitely know that's pretty important, right? So let's go ahead and um, highlight this. And I'm going to add in a little comment about slavery because right here we are going to see the start of America's terrible legacy with slavery. And it's important for us to understand its foundations. So let's go ahead and say the South's dependence on growing cash crops led it to use a large slave labor force. So I'm going to say cash crops like tobacco and cotton require a lot of labor. This led to the importation of African slaves starting in 1619. And 1619 is the year that the first African slave is brought into the United States. So it's important for us to understand where this terrible legacy begins. And we're going to point straight back to the South and to Plymouth, uh, or I'm sorry, Jamestown, in the importation of those African slaves starting in 1619. Okay, wealthy southern plantation owners built elaborate mansions. These recreated the great estates of the English nobility. Many wealthy southerners enjoyed a lifestyle they would never have been able to achieve back in England, where opportunities were fewer. 
All right, so we've read the article. And like I mentioned before, we focused on critical reading, right? So I highlighted things that I knew were important. I added comments to things I've heard before, right? So like maybe you've we've talked about this in class. Those would be good things to add a comment to. So you can see I ended up with four, six, 10 comments in here and some highlights. So my expectation is as you guys are doing this assignment, you've added in these ones that I've put in and then you can add in your own on this second article. So if you scroll down from the first article, you'll see we have a second article in here. And this is an opportunity for you to practice some of those skills that we just talked about. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna read through this newsella, highlight things that are important and add comments to things that we've already talked about in class and try and reaffirm why those things are important, all right? So I hope that helps with everybody who is struggling a little bit with this today. Um, please let me know, send me emails if there's anything else I can do to help you out. All right, have a great day.